Enjoy the rest of the broadcast. We're going to be here for a little bit longer uh, through midnight. And here really, really soon, I expect our guest, uh, Mike the Tech, coming in tonight. So once again, much love going out to everybody. Please enjoy the show. Give me a call. Let me know how things are going, y'all. Check it out. So with all that in mind, right about now, we have a very special guest in studio. We're going to get into a conversation with him in about 10 minutes or so. But for now, it's a good opportunity to get on the mic and see if the levels are right, y'all. What's up? What's up? What's up? How's it going? Yes, let, let the folks know what, what your name is, right? All right, so my name is Mike Rodriguez, also known in some areas as Mike the Tech. And I'm a local teacher and game developer and overall techie, I guess. That's right, that's right, man. When I look at you, I essentially see a mirror because um, for many years I was a co-host on the Wednesday Rec. And it's been like right. a hip-hop show, but whenever I'd contribute something, it was always like tech-related. You know, and so I, I have always had that you know passion at heart so to speak so tonight it's going to be hopefully not too much binary and you know zeros and ones for, for folks out there hopefully it's understandable and in a human readable format so to speak right <laughs> but i'm um, definitely looking forward to getting into a, a you know technical talk i know that you have a lot to contribute and i mean a big background as well with just you know being involved with salinas and different projects from i mean i don't know if i can drop them all but for, for, for sure for sure salinas everywhere. radio salinas news and for, for folks out there that follow the social media, um, you know, like accounts that kind of just tell the Selena story, like you, you've you actually been a big part of that narrative, man. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for, for giving us a voice out here, man. So again, we're going to get a lot more into projects you've been involved in, what's going on now presently with you, and as well as just, you know, kind of chopping it up, man. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. Yes, yes. So once again, for, for folks out there, if you want to check in with us, maybe you want to, uh, you know, ask some, some questions you want us to answer for y'all. Now's the time. As soon as the music starts, give us a call at 831-758-5432. Once again, 831-758-KHDC. We have Mike the Tech in-house. And if you have any questions about viruses or anything like that, no, no, just, just kidding. We're not going to do PC repair over at KHDC right now, but just about. All right. So once again, much love going out to everybody. Keep it locked and definitely check in with us if you want to give us any questions or feedback. All right. Check. Much, much love going out to everybody once again. And right about now, we're going to transition here to our local guest. He's going to be essentially telling us all about what his do's and don'ts are. You know, tabs versus spaces or whatever the conversation will be right now. But definitely want to say welcome back to the microphone, Mike. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll get a, a, a mic check going again here really quick. It sounds pretty good in my ears. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Wait. Awesome, awesome. All right. All right. Yeah, so with all that in mind, um, again, just wanted to kind of give the brief introduction that back when you and I met, I think you were like fresh out of high school and you were already kind of holding down a full grown man's job, <laughs> you know, managing essentially technology for, for, you know, a district. And so, I mean, ever since I've met you, you know, you, you've always kind of like inspired me to kind of continue to learn, continue to grow, you know, and then just kind of watching you grow and develop, you know, from like all the web design stuff we used to do. Um, I've seen a meme re recently where it's like webmaster 10 years ago into, into 2009 or really even before that. And you feel so illuminated with just like that title. Right. And then, you know, what a full stack developer is today. And it's just like all over the place. And you feel o so overwhelmed with like CICD, you know, continuous integration, continuous everything deployments and month, yeah. everything going to the cloud and blah, blah, blah. So there's so much to be able to talk about, you know, but for the average listener out there, I know that um, a lot of this stuff is just kind of magic. You know, so I think one of the, the uh, responsibilities that we have as folks that kind of live in that world is like, you know, try to kind of guide folks, you know, that, that maybe don't understand it as well as we do. So with all that in mind, yeah, man, thank you so much for being somebody that I can always bounce technical ideas off of and, you know, be able to collaborate on many, many different things, man. Yeah, but of course, I love it. Yeah, one, great. one of the big things that stood out to me was when you were doing Salinas Radio. Right. So I kind of want to like learn a little bit about that. Like tell, tell, tell them what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, kind of similar. I right. mean, tell, tell the folks out there um, more or less what, what, what that project was all about. All right. So Salinas Radio was something I started way, way back when. Um, and essentially it was kind of with a similar mission that you guys have here, just highlighting local artists and uh, getting their names out there. So what we initially did is um, I wrote up a really rudimentary contract for a local artist saying like, hey, can we use your stuff and you won't sue us, basically. Right, right. And that was it. And um, if they emailed back yes, then we got to use some of their songs on our, on our little streaming server that I put together. And um, yeah, it actually got quite a few listeners and stuff until we ended up uh, closing it down. So, I mean, between starting it up and just kind of starting to support the local artists to shutting it down, I'm, I'm sure you had a lot of ups and downs and 
I mean, from my from my perspective, you know, I think I was starting to kind of feel more and more confident with maybe sharing the music that I was working on back in those days. Right. And so by the time that I felt confident enough to send you over, you know, like a, a zip file with my MP3s or whatever, I think it was right around the time that it started to, you know, like either you change domain or something happened there. Right. So, so basically the entire um, process was me just learning new technology as I went along. So we started off on the most basic server and I just wanted to get a stream out there. And then I realized that with um, so many listeners listening, we had to have a fast enough internet connection. Right, so we right. started working with bit rates and then, right. you know, it was just a technical process the entire time. And that's where a lot of the changes happened. But um, yeah, it just ended up being a really great project where a lot of artists ended up coming to us and we were we would feature them on, on our site. Like you guys are featured and one of the fun things about it was um, the local touch. So we would always have our artists send little promos and say, hey, you're listening to Spanish Radio and whatever oh, nice, the nice. case was. So they got to get their name out there and I put that in between all the songs. So um, we didn't have like a live situation where we could podcast or do things like this. But right, right. Um, it, it was kind of cool to just have that streaming and going. That's definitely awesome. I think one of the, the, the like beautiful aspects of being able to like do something like that is that you reach beyond just like the local market you know? right exactly especially putting it online so like what what was the the the, the listener capacity on, on something like that well the the statistics changed a lot um over time and basically we were working with like like t1 lines were godly at the time that we were doing this so we we're talking about like 128 kilobit per second streams and things like right, that right. and which is um, like cd quality yeah and so we would end up um with maybe like 50 to 100 listeners wow, that, that's on a, a really, really good day. And then our server would start getting really, really slow. So I'd be oh, like, oh, I now see. I have to pay some hosting fees. And gotcha, then, gotcha. you know, maybe not offer such high quality streams. And so there was a lot of challenges that came along with just um, trying to reach a larger audience. Because it wasn't just people from Salinas right, tuning right. in. It was like, we'd get random hits from Germany or Australia and be like, we don't know who these people are, but yeah. they're listening, you know? And that's kind of what I've noticed. I mean, I'm not sure what technology you, you were using back then. But I know that one of the popular ones is like Shoutcast. That's what it was. Okay, yep, we were nice. using WinApp with Shoutcast installed and um, ran everything on just a basic Windows server that sat in my in my room at my mom's house. Right. That's kind of like yeah. those are the the awesome stories from my perspective. It's like you know an idea that came to life that you know I mean it's just like it's hard to believe that it's possible, but it would definitely be doable. You know, so for folks yeah. out there listening, it's like if you have an idea like that, you know, you want to support your, you know your own projects or you know folks you may know that that you want to kind of have a, a internet radio signal so to speak all that stuff's doable and it's free software yeah you know i mean obviously if, if you want to get 100 listeners with cd quality i mean all of that stuff's probably going to cost a little bit more but i mean if you're curious about any of that that that, that kind of stuff i know that there's a on the linux or the mac side there's another version called icecast right which is kind of built it's kind of like it branches off from shoutcast it seems like one was kind of built for Windows, one was kind of built for Linux and Mac and whatnot. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's free software that exists, you know, and, and I think from my perspective, again, it's like if it can empower us to be able to share a signal, um, not not just, I mean, at this point, it's like that's the, the I don't want to call it evolution, but like that's another way to represent it you know like whenever it's live then at least you know we, we can leverage the fact that hey folks can call in give us questions we can take take advantage of the fact that we're both in the same room together so if we have any ideas it definitely can spark a little bit deeper conversation right. but i mean even having just the online signal like that in itself i mean yeah, and i mean it's easier and easier now um than i ever was like back in the day i still had to have a little like analog 16 track mixer and okay. i still had like you know different things connected to it and getting now a, it's all software based signal to it but i mean we could use our phones right now and probably set up a stream you yes. know without any other equipment or anything so. don't judge us but yes we can do that <laughs> well right. you have an actual uh, analog station to run here too <laughs> right 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 yeah. no no that's actually i mean not to give any secrets out but i mean it's like for anybody out there curious it's like that's technically how it's doable you know right. like you're able to reshare a signal and and let, let folks listen outside of the intended area yeah you know, it's not know. even necessarily just radio i mean everything's so accessible that if you have an idea or something that you want to create or put out there um especially if it's to get people together like that or to expose a certain kind of culture or art i mean go for it the, it's the right time that's pretty much what it comes down to. I think at this point, when I look back in the rear view and I see the different projects that I've been involved in, that you've been involved in, and just how, I mean, I guess life life is full of, you know, ups and downs, you know? So Absolutely. it's like, 
every now and then we feel more encouraged or we feel more inspired or we have like a million ideas. But I think one, one of the challenges that I bumped into was like, how do you maintain 10 different brilliant ideas and keep them all going at the same time? It's like, at yeah. some point, something's going to suffer, yeah, you, you know? know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to start it off, but at some point, again, it's like, yeah. So with all that in mind, I know that you also have um, at some point sparked up like um, a project to kind of give Salinas our own kind of community version of Salinas News. Right. You know, so that project, is that still still going on as well? Yeah, Salinas News is still going. There's, I think we're 14,000 or so strong on wow. Facebook, so it's growing every day. And I like to compare it to the big guys, even though we don't do much of our own reporting. We just kind of share stuff out. And, right, right. Um, take community tips and comments and stuff like that. But it's been really nice to have some platform to be able to share out things that I feel are important and um, kind of mix in some local community aspects to that as well. Because um, I know that we have uh, a lot of negative news sometimes in Salinas. Right, right. So being able to say, okay, yes, there was a police report yesterday, but check out this cool thing that one of our students did at one of our schools. Yes. Or, you know, check out the animal shelter. They're having this great deal or whatever. And you can right. kind of mix it in and um, not have such a dreary experience. On, right, right, you know, right. Getting your news. Yeah, because I, I, I recall at one point... Um, I don't want to say that you like bullied me, <laughs> <laughs> but I did feel a little pressured, right? Yeah. In, a, in a good way where you're like, hey man, well, like if you have something to say, you can always use an author, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, with that in mind, you know, I think it's really important to recognize that because you're absolutely right. I think that's been one of the struggles, like not just myself, but other uh, folks in the community, you know, even some of the nonprofits, you know, like that's been their whole mission statement. Right. Like trying to help change the narrative of crime and violence being our predominant headlines here in this area. Right. And you know, one of um, the hard parts. without like giving any names, because it's not really about bashing anybody or anything like that. <laughs> but it is my experience back when I was in Para La Gente, mm -hmm. you know, and I was contemplating like sending music your way and all that kind of stuff. One of the experiences we had was we went to Santa Cruz and it was for, um, I don't want to be too specific, but let, let's just say it was for, we were going to perform our music for a live broadcast, you know? And I'm not going to say what station or anything like that, or what <laughs> signal, you know, for that sure. matter. But um, when they asked me where I was from, and I said Salinas, literally the question that followed up was, oh, ha have you been shot? Wow. Like, yeah. that's what they asked me, you know? And I'm like, yo, like, I didn't know what to say. I was stunned, you know? Like, I mean, I could have said something, but it wouldn't yeah. have been polite. You know, I mean, it, it was super offensive. And so with that in mind, I mean, I, I remember that just being the norm, yeah. you know, for, for a very, very long time, you know, kind of going out to the peninsula and kind of always being shunned a little bit. When I was attending CSU Monterey Bay, they called it the lettuce curtain. Right. You know, this drive when I'd go from Salinas on a daily basis because I didn't live on campus, I'd just commute, you know. So crossing these fields, right, lo looking at the lettuce, looking at the artichoke from my hometown into this university, right, a place of knowledge and wisdom and all that kind of stuff. And then just kind of hearing again, like, those kind of um, comments, right? Like, oh, the only thing good in Salinas is X, right? Maybe a fast food joint that the Peninsula didn't have, for example. And so, again, Salinas News, right? I mean, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is giving us a local, like, voice, a local platform. You know, I did say you bullied me, but it wasn't really in a bad way. It was more so like, hey, man, like use this you know yeah. like this is available for us that's one of the you main know? things that we need most help on is getting the good word out is there's a lot of people trying to tell us how bad we are and um, when we have a lot of beautiful things in the city and um, we just need uh to let people know what's actually out there i mean i, I grew up on the east side of salinas and um acosta and I, I would always hear the same kind of things like, oh, you live there? Like, right. can we go to my house instead? You know, right, like, right, right. It, was, it was the same kind of things even from within town or people saying, oh, like I live in Monterey County, not Salinas, you know, right. like, I live in Monterey. So it was just, um, there's always been that stigma and that always stood out to me. Um, there was an article on uh, Vice News and I was really into Vice News at the time. I was wanting to be like all reporter status. And they called us the, um, I believe it was the teenage murder capital of the world. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was, a real big bummer to see one of the stations that you look up to kind of talk about your town like that right. so um, when I went with Salinas News I kind of told myself or promised myself that I would try and give an even representation of what's actually here because I'd be lying if I didn't say I saw some bad stuff growing up but I'd also be lying if there wasn't a lot of really amazing talent coming out of our city so right right and yeah. I think that's the really important part to recognize is I mean you're a prime example of you know, like somebody from Salinas, <laughs> you, you know, um, 
the good side of Selena's per se, right? I mean, maybe not everybody will agree what's good or what's bad, but I mean, you know, the, the often criticized the often criticized side of Selena's, but yet, you know, a side of Selena's that time and time again gives you know, gives birth and and nourishes, you know, like very, very creative individuals, you know, very talented folks that have so much to contribute. You know, right. I mean I know not to just jump all over the place, but I mean like you do have a lot of different layers to you, you right. know, and one of them is, I mean, in recent endeavors, like you were teaching at Millie, um, the charter school, right? Yeah. And I know that that also kind of went through its ups and downs. I don't, I don't even know if the charter school is operating at this point. It sounds no, like they, they might have lost it. Yeah. yeah. So that's a whole nother conversation we can possibly get into. <laughs> but, you know, the whole aspect of it is that you've turned around and you've shared your, your abundance of knowledge. You know, in terms of video game development, in terms of 3D modeling, in terms of just like te the the technical sharpness you have, man. So right, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I try and do as much as I can, trying to get the knowledge out there. Because like, I start a lot of projects. You and I both know that I start tons of projects. But um, you know, that's why I make videos on YouTube. That's why I teach. I'm actually teaching at Alisal High School now as well, and um, just kind of getting um, the knowledge out there to young creators, people who want to get um, their stories out. Because I mean, even talking about the negative in Selena, sometimes the negative is what causes uh, some of these artists to flourish and come up right. with a real story that they want to share with the world or a change that they want to make because of what they've seen. So um, I think it's really important to not just create, but to teach others to create as well. And um, that's what I'm hoping to do. Well, you're, de you're definitely doing it, man. Um, I want to encourage you to continue to do it. You know, I I've been watching some of those videos. For folks out there wondering how they can follow you or support you, it's really simple to follow you, man. <laughs> Let them know again what, what your, your username is on YouTube and Instagram. Mike the Tech. <laughs> it's Mike the Tech on everything. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube is where I post most of my videos. Um, but if you search for my name, you'll probably find me um, all over the place, wherever you happen to be, wherever you might happen to be. Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, from social media, you know, to specifically the multimedia, you know, that's something yes. that I, I've never really found myself comfortable enough to do. I think I have... Um, and whether I'm right or wrong, I think I'm right because this is me saying it. <laughs> I have a, a face for radio, you know. No, 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 no. I mean, it's one of those things where I just don't feel comfortable I've, putting I've my... heard that once or twice before. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> it's like I just get so camera shy whenever somebody starts recording. Like I'll be in a, in 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 a, in a cipher in 100% my zone, and somebody will bring a camera out and I'll just freeze like a deer in headlights. Yeah, like just yeah. nope. Not gonna happen. It's a different feeling. It's the same, it really it's the same is. feeling I got coming on here for the radio for the first time. Right, right. But see, right. like the radio, I just feel so much more comfortable where like we can talk on the microphone and we can talk about some really serious subjects and or switch it to some, you know, personal reflections of something that's comical. Yeah. Like it doesn't really matter. Like and, and I just can't do it on the video. There is no man. bad take that we have to redo everything and no, set up the no. lighting again. It's like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There, there's yeah. just so much more more layers to the whole uh, video aspect of it. So big ups to you on on all Thank those you. different videos, man. I, I know that, that you you were doing a series of essentially like kind of showing folks on one hand, it was like tutorials, but you also had like a whole series on unboxing stuff. So just like the excitement of checking out new technology, <laughs> right, right. or maybe not everybody could afford it, but maybe like living vicariously through you. No oh, sure. You know, yeah. you know. So I mean, <laughs> there, there's there's just been a lot of excitement, man. Whenever I I see your your presence on social media, it's you know it's positive, it's uplifting, man. So I just want to say I appreciate you know that that kind of voice coming out of Salinas. Well, I appreciate that know? a lot. Um, it's it's definitely nice to hear uh, good words coming from you, especially because I really look up to you and the work you've done. So no, definitely, really man. Great. The feeling is mutual. And again, I definitely see you as like, I mean, you may not believe me 100%, but I, I swear, like, it's it's a mirror, bro. It's like, there really isn't a lot of folks that, that I can nerd out with 100%, I get it. I get you know? It. Yeah. And so when I when I say shoutcasting, you're like, yeah, that, that's what I was using. I'm like, <laughs> nobody else has told me, like, no. I know what, what, what you're talking about, man. So <laughs> I definitely appreciate all that. Um, and again, I mean, we're, we're going to be here through midnight, so you're more than welcome to hang out with us and be able to spend time here, you know, pretty much sharing conversations with us. So with all that in mind, if there's anything that, that, that you want to circle back to, we can definitely continue the the good conversations but we also have a lot of music to continue to play here for for the listeners man so thank you, thank you. If, right. if there's any shout outs you want to give sure. before we jump back into some music definitely yeah so i uh, just want to give a, a birthday shout out to miguel torres my nephew so it's his birthday today and nice, i just want to give him some love what about any uh, any 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 special students out there who who've been flourishing and or giving you a headache you know <laughs> special shout outs um 
Gosh, I can't, I can't give specific names. Just the whole class, <laughs> right? My, all my classes class, are right. amazing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they just make me happy to be at work. When even when I might not be happy to be there, they make me happy to be there. Right, right. Yeah. I, I feel like that's also a big blessing, you know, to be able to work with future generations, man. It's yeah, like, to see the excitement is is really motivating. And see them grow, you know. I think at the end of the day, it's like before you know it, they're they're no longer students, but they're colleagues. Right. You know, you blink twice, and it's like, man, time flies. Yeah. You know, so again, it's Seeing been. Seeing them go off and create their own projects and head off to college and do all these great things is really cool definitely definitely man so with all that in mind shout out to all the folks out there listening um if you happen to be a student and or you you have you know children who are interested in technology definitely check out the alisa high school because they have you know uh supportive staff there to be able to guide your youth you know or you yourself into you know career paths that i think traditionally we haven't really been um allowed into you know i think it's been either out of reach technically you know economically just the resources weren't there right but i mean here's a prime example yo mike the tech in-house tonight yeah. you know kind of giving us his story firsthand of you know pretty much being a, a, a resident out of salinas and and making a living off of that kind of tech culture yo so again bi big ups to you bro thank you so much for having me definitely definitely we're gonna jump back on the mic here in a bit but we're gonna get into some 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 music we're gonna give the numbers out again so if anybody out there listening maybe has any specific questions feel free to give us a call 831-758-5432 once again 831-758-KHDC and we're gonna be here for about another hour so definitely take advantage of us uh our I guess nerdiness is at your service, y'all. All right, <laughs> check it out. Once again, much love going out to all the folks out there. That was 30 minutes of music, y'all. You got 30 minutes of us talking, 30 minutes of music. I think it's only right that we get back into a conversation. But before we do that, Palabra Volume Live has been happening all weekend here. It started March 5th. That was Thursday night. It happened last night, 8 p.m. both nights. Um tonight as well 8 p.m and then tomorrow is the very very final one this is happening tomorrow sunday at 2 p.m at el teatro campesino located at 705 fourth street in san juan bautista so palabra live is el teatro campesino's artist showcase featuring local artists join us for the weekend of music poetry teatro and more all of this is being presented in a live round stage so that means that the audience is getting a 360 view as well as streamed live for the very first time and i do have a little bit more details here um some of the acts one of them is uh written and directed by luis chago juarez and that right there is featuring la sofa queen with uh el gigante and diana castillo and that right there is rap de tiburcio vasquez so a little bit of a uh local history there we did have a, a elementary school named after tiburcio vasquez and, uh, you know, Chago's creative direction is to tell these stories using teatro. Now, La Sofa Queen is a hip hop artist, so she's bringing a little bit of that kind of flow. So, again, if you haven't seen their work, um, definitely put it on your calendar for tomorrow afternoon. 2 p.m. is the very last one. Or look out for their live broadcast because that's also another way that you're able to essentially tune in and support. Um, there's other original hip hop stuff going on. Um, I know that an, another artist performing is Boca Negra, who has been our artist here recently. So again, much love going out to all the different folks involved. Um, specifically the folks behind the scenes as well. I think sometimes they're the unsung heroes that don't really give a, that, that don't get that shout out. So the honorable mention going to folks like that Daniel Iberra, who was also one of our recent guests here. And he's one of the camera operators for that uh, volume live edition. So again, much, much love going out to them. That right there is part of our community calendar. And right about now, we're gonna shift focus once again back here to Mike the Tech, still in studio. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the microphone. Thank once you again. so much, thank you. Yeah, so off air, we've been enjoying conversations ranging from, I mean, everything, it sounds like, man. Yeah. It's just like, you know, specifically, though, I think, again, just kind of, kind of to kind of recap, is the ups and downs of life. I mean, having a friendship for over 10 years, um, we're bound to grow. We're bound we to kind so of run, run into things. Run course. <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. And so at this point, I don't know, I mean, any, any speculation as far as trends for 2020 or you know flying cars or who knows man i mean uh trends for 2020 uh, i can only really speak to things that i've been kind of pushing a lot recently so i've been learning a lot about vr and okay. the direction of virtual reality so um that's been a lot of fun um seeing the ways that that's evolved from being really clunky systems to being really uh, concise, neat systems that are very immersive and can track your hands and finger movements. And right, all right. Cool stuff, so you so. said virtual reality. Yeah. 
What about augmented reality? Augmented reality is fun. Um, I, I made a little course uh, for a company called eDynamic Learning um, where we're teaching uh, high school students how to use Unity. And we actually created an augmented reality app in there that um, it's kind of like a treasure hunt where you go find a real life picture and a 3D object would pop out with information. So that was a lot of fun. Um, nice, it's, nice. it's kind of crazy what technology has really turned into now. Right, right. Now, you, you mentioned, a, you brought up a couple of keywords right there. Um, for the average listener out there that doesn't know what Unity is, it's yes. a 3D engine, you know, for, it's pretty much like a tool to be able to build video games, right. if, if I'm yes. not mistaken, right? Yeah, so Unity is one of the uh, two or three major game engines that pretty much every video game is made in. Um, the other ones being Unreal Engine, which um, they make Fortnite. Um, lots of AAA titles use that engine. Right, right. And then Game Maker Studio too, probably. Right, right. And then in terms of like virtual reality versus augmented, for folks out there familiar with like Pokemon, you know, I think that that's one yeah. of the, the applications that uses augmented, right? Yeah. Like they'll, they'll put a Pokemon in like your camera field, so to speak, right? Yeah. So um, augmented reality is essentially you're looking through a camera of some sort to look at the real world. And then information is augmented onto the real world. So uh, like you said with Pokemon Go, if you want to catch Pikachu, you could actually see him standing on your chair and, you know, toss a ball and actually catch him in your living room instead of in a 3D world. I, I've heard of that happening, but I actually haven't ever installed Pokemon. I, I, at least not <laughs> You're these. Missing like, out. <laughs> it sounds like I am. Um, I want to give a special shout out to, uh, I think the account is the Crystal Pug. Um, and yesterday she came out to support the CD release for 1AM as well as Con. Nice. And um, coming out from Salinas into Santa Cruz. And then we met for the first time. And so we're trying to like exchange in, uh, our, our IG accounts and we realize that we're, we're already following each other. Oh, nice. Right? So nice. it's like, oh, cool. So now we, we put a face to the, to the account, so to speak, right? Yeah. But um, I was watching the, the stories, right? And so as she's reflecting on like, oh, cool. You know, I got a chance to come out and support 1AM and I met some local artists. She also said, and I caught some Pokemon. <laughs> I'm like, yo, so like this is actually like a lot of folks are really into yeah. this, you know? I mean, even I know some of my, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but some of the folks that... I know, uh, professionally, you know, are catching Pokemon, and I'm like, yo, I, I never would have thought that, yeah. that you're a Pokemon, you know, catcher as well, yo. That, that's it's interesting that when it was first coming out, and it was kind of a craze. I was walking in uh, Old Town Salinas, and um, I saw a group of people standing by where one of the uh, gyms was at, because I was playing it too. So okay. I was gonna walk over to that gym, and I saw like six people standing there, and like two officers and everything. I was really? like, what's going on? You know, I thought something happened, and they were all just in a group huddled around playing <laughs> playing that gym already. So I mean, it's it's really spreading. It was interesting. So a gym is a, a I'm thinking like something that's part of the digital game, right? Yeah, like and it draws familiar everybody with. Um, if you're familiar with old like RPG or role-playing games on computers, um, it would be like a raid where you have like you and 15 of your friends get together to try and take down a big boss. Right, right. Um, and then if you take it down, you all get to catch it. So that's kind of fun. And in augmented reality, it's a physical location yeah, where you actually so walk up to it. You you text your friends and be like, hey, we're meeting up at Starbucks because there's a Charizard over here. Right? That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's it's aspects of video games that have evolved beyond like my, my own uh, experience with it. I don't want to say that I stopped at Super Mario Brothers, but no, not that far back. <laughs> I'm not that far back, but I mean, it, it's it's amazing to look at it and how far it's came from a 2D world, right? Just left and right, up and down, to then 3D to now augmented reality, where you're walking around and doing stuff in, in real life, so to speak. Yeah, it's insane. Um, definitely, man. So again, big ups to you for being one of the um, the trailblazers. You know, you. I mean, at least locally in terms of education. You know, in terms of like bringing that kind of knowledge to our to our high school district. You know, to to students that. That are curious about it because i think a lot of times that's another aspect of like technology is that um there's all these unhealthy habits that we develop and we develop like you know addictions towards technology where we abuse um or maybe more like it abuses us you know like yeah. i think that that we we just kind of get stuck in consuming it and so there's a big change in like when you just use technology when you're just like watching youtube versus being like a content creator for youtube Absolutely. you know so the difference between playing a video game and making a video game or like listening to music and making music yeah we need to know. remember that the devices that we pay for are tools and they're tools to make our lives easier so if you find yourself 
being pulled to that as a job or a chore that you have to keep on repeating, um, you're not necessarily using it as a tool. So if you're, um, the best thing to do is just try and find out what you want to do. And if you want to create something, then you use your tools at hand and try and make something out of that. So that's what I'm trying to bring to the to the local students. And there's a lot of great programs now, actually, in Salinas where there wasn't before. Right. Um, when I was in high school, I remember we had one tech-related class, really, unless we went off to another building, like a, at the ROP Center, we'd have to actually take a bus to go over there. I, I recall um, that, man. Yeah, so we didn't have anything at the school except the little robotics class and a couple of things, and even that got me so excited about tech, so I can only imagine what um, kids have now. I mean, we have the Future Citizens Foundation here in town where um, right, right. middle school kids and elementary school kids can already learn to code. We have Coder Dojo. Um, a lot of the schools are starting to get really advanced computer science programs too. So right, right. It's exciting. It's a, it's a great time. And I know that for a few years there, there was a lot of movement in terms of like different, um, like tech based or kind of like youth technology groups, right? There was like Girls Who Code. There was like, yeah, you're still doing um, a day stuff. of code. I want to say. I mean, hour there, there of was. Code, yeah. There you go. Hour of code. I mean, just all these different movements to like try to really get folks. Um, to open up our minds, you know, that this is something that we can actually, like, live in and work in and contribute. And so it's not just something that we're consuming, but something that we can use to be able to also be creative. Absolutely. Um, just, we're all so interconnected now that when you do create something, you have the potential of reaching millions of people and whatever type of art you're creating can influence those people really strongly. Right, right, right. So one of the other big shout outs that I want to give is to the Alice House Center for the Fine Arts, because nice, I know that nice. they, in recent years, um, Again, I wish I had more up-to-date details on it, but it's just an honorable mention that they, they had actually invested in getting, like, a 3D printer. Oh, very you cool. Know? Yeah. yeah, and so they were reaching out to, like, folks that would be from the community that may be interested in kind of helping them um, kind of guide them in usage and, like, yeah. you know, what, what would be some of the creative, uh, Im you know, methods to implement solutions, right? Because, I mean, you, you can always do a 3D model for, like, you know, just, like, a little toy figure or something. Mm -hmm. But once you start learning that you can actually, like, craft a 3D model and create something, you know, that you design digitally yeah. and manifest that into the physical world. Like, it's it's pretty, it's a pretty powerful concept. Yeah, for sure. You know? And so with all that in mind, just a big shout out to them for, for doing that. Shout out to the, the charter school for all the years that they were around, you know, kind of contributing also to, you know, kind of giving alternative paths to learn technology. Because I think traditionally it's, it's always been again more of a phobia i think and, and maybe that's just because of the previous generations that didn't grow up with it yeah you know i think that we're like at this kind of magical kind of like zone where we grew up with like a very analog world where we didn't necessarily have the benefit of you know all this fast internet you know fast computers so to speak uh smartphones right and so seeing that transition from being like a very analog offline world to then being connected to kind of it speeding up and i feel like we're kind of running where we should still be I don't want to say crawling anymore, but at least yeah. walking, you know? I feel like we're kind of going like head first into a lot of these realms. Um, a big one right now is like the internet of things, you know? Right. And that's just something where like, a really basic example that I'm using right now for that is I went and I bought these um, electricity outlets, right? That essentially have a Wi-Fi module built, built into it. So then anything that I plug into it, I can control through my smartphone, right? So I have this old analog heater that literally has a knob to control right. the temperature, but I plugged it into one of these smart devices. And so now I could, you know, before I go out onto the garage, I can open up my phone and turn on the heater, yeah. you know? So the internet of things aspect of it, you know, it's just like really amazing to take all these analog devices and then start connecting them, making them digital as well. Yeah, it's it's amazing the, the conveniences that technology can bring, um, sometimes at the cost of security here and there. Oh yeah, and a lot I of I think times, that's kind actually. of what you're referencing with we're running before mm -hmm. we're ready to, but um, it's definitely allowed for a lot more convenience. Um, for sure. Right, right, right. And honestly, like that, that aspect of the convenience, um, that's something that I've always admired about you because I've, I've noticed like that's been the trend, you know, like throughout the years. I mean, I was one of those guys that was wearing like the tinfoil hat on my computer. I mean, not yeah. literally, but like metaphorically, like I would disable JavaScript and I would like not trust, you know, a lot of these different services to like access my phone book, yeah. you know, and then I would see your posts and it's like, well, the reason that you let them access your phone book is that way whenever you want to share something, now you don't need to like go and manually type in somebody's phone number. Right. Like it'll already be synchronized, so to speak. And then it's such a, a hard balance too, because as a tech and when you know those kinds of things, you're like, no, don't worry. 
this is perfectly normal and this is why they need it and then you have the bad actors here and there who also right, right. go like yeah well we're also gonna steal your information or something and i think that's kind of <laughs> like another really healthy conversation to have you know is that um throughout the years we've seen like companies that have we've entrusted with our our you know privacy with our yeah. communications with you know i mean all these different I think that's kind of where the problem lies, right? It's, well, it's like, kind of a shock to hear that Experian, the people who deal with your credit history and um, social security number and everything, right. were hacked. So, I mean, if, if they're not even safe, then, you know. That's a great example of it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have pretty much everybody's data. They know what everybody makes, you know, every single year. Exactly. And so, it's, I don't know, man. It's definitely dis disheartening, you know. It, it kind of kills the motivation and, like, that, that hype. If that used it's in like, the right way, technology is extremely powerful. Right, right. Yeah. And so, with all that in mind, I do want to thank you again for, you know, again, being being one of the, the pillars out here, man, for, like, just, you know, kind of carrying that torch and showing us the way in terms of like what's possible what's doable thank you, you know? i appreciate that it's being recognized sometimes it's it's a it's a very slow climb when you're trying to um reach people online or grow a business or even a social media account so it's right, good that right. people are kind of noticing not um, definitely man. things that you're doing so thank you very very welcome brother um we're gonna do one more psa here before we're up and out of here and then um we're gonna come back on the on the, on the microphone we have about 10 minutes left for this transmission so Again, anybody out there that may have any questions, comments, feedback, give us a call, 831-758-5432. Once again, 831-758-KHDC. You can reach me online at EME7, and that's on Instagram, Twitter, social media, uh, Facebook. You can just Google M7, the same way, EME7, and there's also a way to get a hold of me. So wherever you're at, uh, feel free to reach out and get a hold of me, man. Um, again, 10, 10 more minutes or so. We're going to do a PSA. We'll be right back. All right, check it out. Yes, yes. So once again, we are about 10 minutes before we are up and out of here. It's been an awesome show tonight. Uh, Mike the Tech has been joining us here for the last hour and a half or so. Right about now, though, we have another surprise Mike in the house stopping by. And um, for the time being, yeah, why don't you just go ahead and say say hello? Man. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's uh, Michael Orozco out here. Just wanted to stop by, say what's up. Word, word, man. DJ that, Mike. Definitely welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, just to get folks out there listening, uh, a little bit of context. Um, a few of the times that I bumped into you out here kind of randomly has been like some of the, the young professional mixers. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. At, here at the Steinbeck Center and things of that nature. I know that you've been supporting with uh, Rick Jams, some of the, some of his events. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. There was a Day of the Dead one recently right here at the Vets Hall, right? Oh, yeah. So much. And I think I saw you a couple days ago right here at the Bearded Bean. That's right, that's right. Yeah, man. you were out there just... Yeah, rock I was kind of pra practicing the freestyles, man. Practicing oh, nice. the freestyles because I had a show last night in Santa Cruz. So, oh, nice. you know, I mean, I got to try, try to stay consistent at it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm a little too rusty, you know? Oh, yeah. No. yeah you got to knock, always... knock the rust off, you know? Yeah. Nice, nice. Plus, it's always good to come out to the hometown and, like, kind of connect here locally oh, and get and then get that that kind of confidence to be able to take it out you know to, yeah. a, to a different city so to speak oh hell yeah, yeah. so yeah. i appreciate you 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 being out there you know giving us the the, the good vibes oh, definitely. did you get a chance to see some of the um other artists or uh no i didn't but i wanted to i know uh yeah i was just kind of like rolling through the old town and like, right right like, and then we, we were pretty much closing it out at the very end so yeah i mean it was good 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 seeing you for sure as well oh, definitely um big big shout out going out again to emily she was up there freestyling with me and oh, that, yeah, she was i saw that that yeah. was the first time we've ever done that man that, yeah. that was actually that like was cool. an, an experience in its own kind of you know right there oh definitely so yeah. thank thank you again for for coming out there for stopping by by tonight man it's, it's oh, definitely yeah. a cool little surprise and then we have your little brother in the house tonight too right yeah Yes, yeah, uh, Christian right here. My name is Christian. Follow me at Padaguchi on Instagram. What's up? I'm a tailor. Yes. Nice, man. And, and, and what do you do, Christian, if, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, yeah. I'm a tailor. tailor. I sew clothes and alter clothes and make bags. and. Nice, man. Yeah, so that's what I do. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Yes. Word up, word up, man. Yeah. Well, big, big ups to both of y'all for, you know, ha having the confidence to just, you know, come up and say say hello tonight, man. Appreciate oh, yeah, you guys. Like, yeah. Braver than I was. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Mike the Tech is still, still in the studio. Uh, 831, that's where it's at. <laughs> that's where it's at, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yes, yeah. much love going out to the station for always being, uh, you know, I guess, welcoming of the different voices, man. I mean, if, if, if we look at the... the the different broadcast schedule i mean everything from reggae to oldies to you know rock and espanol to i mean in this case hip-hop 
Casio has been holding down the Wednesday Rec since 1993 here at oh, KKHCC. Yeah. So happy to be here to continue carrying the torch and provide the platform, man. I mean, that's yeah. exactly why the door's open, you know? Yeah, this is to, like, to be able to let folks such as yourselves come out and at least give a quick hello. Yeah, this is like the community radio area. Right? Exactly, exactly, cool. man. Yeah. It's a community right here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So big ups to all you. Uh, I mean, again, Mike, if there's anybody you want to give a shout out to tonight, you know, yeah, shout out to my fiance, shout out to my dog Kitsune. There you go, man. There <laughs> I love go. my dog. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I mean, I know you also have a lot of folks out there just in 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 the world who who, who you've connected with. Um, anybody that that you felt like was a mentor, anybody you want to give a shout out that kind of taught you or showed 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 you a little bit of the path there. Honestly, I, I've met so many people in the community. I mean, um, you've honestly been uh, someone who I kind of looked up to for a long time. Thank you, I appreciate you were working there right when I first started getting into working in tech. So right, right. it's been really interesting to kind of watch your growth and your projects. It's and been mutual, it's inspiring, man. Yeah, so, likewise. so I mean. I, I've met a lot of great people, but um, but even in this field, when you guys are talking about you know DJ Rick Jans or like Emily Morales, I'm like, I recognize these people from even other fields. So it's just right, so right. cool to see how the community is just coming together on all fronts. Yes, so, yes, it's, it's a very nice. vibrant community, and it's it's a small world, you know. I mean, it's it's, yeah, it's Salinas out here. So again, much love going out to everybody who's been a part of you know yeah. whether you've been behind the scenes, whether you've been right there front and center stage, yeah. you know. Um, it's been generations, you know, of like really kind of seeing folks grow, seeing folks kind of have different priorities creep up and maybe yeah. take take their main focus away for a little bit, but circle oh, back yeah. around and these these names, you know, keep on kind of recurring, so to speak. And so yeah. again, the much much love. Positivity of the show is is just great, you know. Yes, exactly, exactly. Need more of that. Yeah, so true. again, I mean, it's a it's an open invite if you guys ever want to come back. And again, putting it out there for anybody listening. I mean, if if you're an artist or if you are a community member out here that you know you you have a story to share. I mean, this is a show that would love to have you. Um, and feel free to check in with me again. You can find me at eme7 on Instagram, Twitter, social. What is it? Uh, SoundCloud, Facebook, social media, pretty much in general. If you go to the dot com, um, that's pretty much the easiest way to kind of get get the aggregate there. Um, and 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 again, just reach out with that intention, and it's an it's an open door, y'all. So oh, nice. yeah, sweet, yeah. Open arms everywhere. Exactly, exactly, man. Um, any any shout outs you want to give, Mike? Uh, everybody out in Salinas. Yeah, just having a good time. Yeah. Nice, nice, man. The community. Yeah, thank you for listening. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right. The shout out that I want to give then, um, pretty much, I want to give a, a special mention to the time of period that that we're in right now. I guess um, I'm kind of a little bit in tune with our indigenous uh, roots, so to speak, right? So on this ancient way to tell time, uh, time, time tracking system called the Aztec calendar or the Tonal Machor and now uh, today's the start of a, of a period called Nemontemi, right? So the Nemontemi are the last five days of the year and March 12th is the first day of the year. So these, you know, we're pretty much counting down to the new year. So in the same way that we have a, a new year resolution at the end of the year, December 31st, and then we ring in the, the new year by, you know, eating 12 grapes or whatever the, you know, the, the tradition is. The, the next five days are kind of meant for a period of reflection, you know, looking at what went well for us, looking at what needs to be improved, uh, planning this upcoming year and trying to kind of reflect and, and, and regain focus and clarity, so to speak. So uh, previous years, I've, I've went above and beyond and like try to actually like, you know, not eat during the day, you know, kind of like how other uh lifestyles you know or world views kind of approach you know their own um time, time periods for like fasting and things of that nature right and so yeah man i i i look forward to just kind of going through this 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 transition so to speak you know be being aware of, of these changes being aware that tonight we do have a uh, spring forward right so daylight savings times happening uh, clock adjustment so make sure that we set that tonight we lose an hour this week and it's only 47 hours instead of 48 sadly so um, we, we do get it back later on in the fall but all of these different movements um, you know time correlation systems so to speak are kind of tying and unifying here so I just wanted to give a shout out here to Essentially, all the folks that have showed us the way, you know, to to know when when the seasons change, to know when it's time to transition from you know being dormant to now being active and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. again, big ups to you guys for sliding through tonight. You know, otherwise it'd just be me rambling here. Yeah. Yes, always, always. And again, I look forward to having y'all back, man. I mean, it's it's definitely been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yes, me too. Thank you for having me. Nice, nice. So with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and play the instrumental here for y'all, uh, and then transition out to satellite. Thank y'all for listening, and we'll see y'all next week, 9 p.m to midnight as we do every single Saturday night. KHDC, thank you very much. Much love going out to everyone. Peace, y'all.
This is KHDC, Chular Salinas, 90.9 FM, and K281BR Hollister, Radio Bilingüe, National Latino Public Radio Network. Esta es KHDC, Chular Salinas, 90.9 FM, y K281BR Hollister, 104.1 FM, Radio Bilingüe, la red nacional de radio pública latina. <música> 